Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Clock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, it's so good to be with you. We're going to start a new series now on the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments help us to really structure our lives according to God's expectation. And for some of us, I think that the Ten Commandments, we think of them as, oh, this doesn't apply to me. For instance, you know, I haven't killed anyone, so I don't have to worry about that commandment. And while I'm happy to hear that nobody's murdered anybody, I mean, the reality is it's it's much deeper than that. So my hope is in these next 10 episodes, as we break down the commandments, it's really going to help you to kind of look at it and think, what are the ways in which I can grow in my relationship with God? And which are the ways that we can get rid of some of the bad habits in our daily lives? So the Ten Commandments were, of course, given by God the Father to Moses on the top of Mount Sinai. There at the bottom of the mountain, we remember from Scripture, the people were a bit confused, or perhaps they chose to be confused, and were distancing themselves from God by their actions and behaviors. What we have to remember, friends, is that the Ten Commandments are God's summary of the many, many expectations of a good Jew to live a faithful life. And so the Ten Commandments are a summary of the hundreds of rules that a good Jewish person was to follow if they wanted to be faithful. And so by God giving us the Ten Commandments, it's not only a gift to the people of Israel and to Moses, but each one of us that they really summarize how we should live in our relationship with him. So the first three commandments talk about love of God. The final seven commandments talk about our relationship with one another. And we're going to break them down one at a time. It's important that we realize that the Ten Commandments, it's not like a menu. We don't get to pick, well, I'm going to follow this commandment, but not that one. This is something where we have to be all in on all ten. We have to really work towards How am I following these Ten Commandments of God? And if I truly love God, then I want to follow his commandments. I mean, it's it's pretty simple and we get that in our minds. But am I actually following this by what I say and what I do? So using sports analogies, I mean, you have to follow the rules to play the sport. If you don't follow the rule, there's a consequence. When we don't follow God's commandments, there's a consequence. We call that sin and the temporal punishment due to sin, right? So let's look at hockey for an example. If a forward is flying down the right side of the ice rink and the defenseman goes and starts swinging his stick and connects his stick with the left leg or right leg of the player, the referee blows the whistle and calls a slashing penalty. A slashing penalty is a two-minute penalty that the defenseman now has to sit in the penalty box for two minutes or less, and the opposing team now has one extra player on the ice because it's against the rules. You can't slash a player just because you feel that he's going to blow by you and go to the net. So the defenseman doesn't get to pick and choose how he's going to play defense. So it is with us. We don't pick and choose. These commandments, we know the right way we are to live our lives, and yet sometimes we become selfish, just as the defenseman did, and takes out his anger by slashing the opposing team. In football, we know the same thing, is that if all of a sudden a player is beat down the field, you can't just shove the player out of bounds. No, this becomes a pass interference penalty, and the referee blows the whistle, and indeed, this team is penalized, by bringing the football all the way down the field at the point in which the infraction takes place. So again, this is part of our life. When the speed limit is said to be 50 kilometers an hour, then that's what you are to drive. That's the maximum speed. So when a police officer pulls us over because we're going 65 because we're late for work, well, there's a consequence to that. I don't get to make up the rules on what the speed limit is on Main Street. Right? So it's important that we recognize this, friends, and live accordingly. And so let's let's look at the Ten Commandments in a very practical way and apply them to our lives. So let's start with the first commandment. 
The first commandment, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. At first glance, you might say to yourself, Oh, this doesn't apply to me. I love God. So, next. Well, let's slow down for a second. I might say that I love God, but do I really love God? Because this doesn't just refer to having other gods. In other words, believing in Greek mythology or in some other way, another concept of a deity or another god. But rather, do I place God first? And this is so vital. This is so important. This idea of placing God first. So first and foremost, yes, it is important that we realize that there are no other gods. There is only one God. When we think of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons in one God, we believe in what's called monotheistic, meaning one God, not multiple ones. But it's also important that we realize that we don't use strange gods. Strange gods refers to idols. You might think from the scriptures, you might remember when the people of Israel are making that golden calf and begin to worship that golden calf. That's why Moses has a mental breakdown and throws the, the uh, Ten Commandment tablets down and he has to go back up the mountain and receive them from God a second time, you know? This idea of idolatry. What is a golden calf? It's ridiculous when we think about it. It's a statue just because it's made out of a precious metal. Why would anyone ever worship that? Well, these days, idols take many other forms. How many people worship money and would do anything for money? I'll sell my soul to the devil. I'll do anything to build wealth in my life. I might even do immoral activities. For instance, people who might murder people in the mafia or whatnot because they were told to do so or for the sake of money or possessions. So we have to understand idolatry is much bigger than that. Some people that, you know, go to fortune tellers, Ouija boards, etc. It's important that we realize that by going to fortune tellers, looking at astrology, palm readings, horoscopes, mediums, these are all idols. What we're essentially saying is that I don't trust that God has my best interest in mind, that he isn't looking out for me. On some level, you might say, well, I'm, I'm just curious. Well, God doesn't want us to be curious. God wants us to live our life trusting that he is with us and that he knows what's going to happen in the past, present, and future, and we need to just trust in him and to recognize his presence in our life is a gift from God. And we are not to be God-like. Well, I want to know what's going to happen in my future. Am I going to find my spouse? Well, if we pray to God, you're going to find a spouse. If you pray to God, you're going to get the job. What I'd like to know when I might die is, am I going to die in the next 10 years? I'm going to die in 20 years. It's not up to us to be like God. It's not up to us to allow the power of evil to come forward and tell us what's happening. I want to talk to my loved ones who have died. Great, enter into prayer. Have a mass celebrated for them. That's how we talk to people who have passed away. We trust that they are in the presence of God and that God will deliver them from life without him, eternal damnation, and live with him in the power of Jesus' resurrection and eternal life. So again, friends, it's important that we realize that even just in our dialogue with God and our understanding of our loved ones who have died, that it's important that we trust that they are in the presence of God. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And so sometimes in very subtle ways, we break the commandment by doing things that are not God-like. And these are just some examples of instances in which people are not God-like. It's also important about spiritual laziness, you know, not doing the right thing taking it upon ourselves to perhaps try to end somebody's life who's on life support or, you know, doesn't want to live anymore and we follow physician-assisted suicide. No, it is God who gives life. It is God 
who dictates when their life is going to end. It's not up to us. What God really wants us to focus on is to put all of our trust and love in him. So God needs to be number one in my life. I need to trust that he has my best interests in mind. And I need to shape my daily life to say things and do things that give him honor and praise. So it's important that we understand that. And that we also have to recognize that all good things come from God. So my attitude of gratitude each day is not to say, well, look at me. Look at what I've done. Look what I've created. This family is because of me. This house is because of my hard work. No, I need to recognize that it's because of God that I have everything. God's given me the health. God's given me the intelligence. God's given me the grace. By his love, I even exist. And so this idea of I am the Lord your God is a recognition of relationship between God and us. And so it should be something that we really focus on. And so if I really love God, then I want to please him every day. I want to do things that are God-like and holy. So what does this look like for us? Do I love God with my whole heart and soul? Does it mean I don't have any room to love other people? But do I love my spouse before God? Do I love my kids more than I love God? Do I love my boyfriend or girlfriend before I love God? Do I love my job more than I love God? Do I love hockey more than I love God? Do I love golf more than I love God? See, these are all issues, friends, because they almost become like idols. So again, I have to think about, you know, throughout my day, the way I spend my 24 hours. If I haven't spent time in prayer, then I'm not placing God first. And I need to make time for that. Because when we love someone, we want to talk to them. We want to spend time with them. We want to show them how much we love them. So again, friends, we might say, okay, I do love God. I don't worship any other gods. But then we have to ask ourselves the question, do our actions back that up? When we read in the Catechism, too, it talks about the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. And we recognize that all of these virtues come from God as well. Our faith in him is so vitally important. The fact that we hope in him is so vitally important. And that because he loved us first, our love for him is only modeling his first love for us. So when we're looking at our lives, are there ways in which we can grow in this, friends? How can we improve? How can I improve? How can you improve? Well, you know, I want to spend more time in prayer with God. God, I need to recognize and give you thanks each day for all the good things that come. And also, sometimes thanking God for the things that aren't as pleasurable for us too. Because what doesn't break us makes us stronger. God has brought us to something. He's going to see us through it. So we also say, Lord, you know, you've given me a cross that's very difficult for me right now. But with your grace, with your help, I'm going to get through it because, as St. Paul says, with God, all things are possible. So when we also think about placing God first, we have to recognize giving him the, the proper time that is his due. Weekly mass attendance, daily prayer, and the way I speak to others. Do I really focus on the fact that I see God in one another? And as I see God in one another, it helps me to really understand that God is first in my life. Because even when somebody is difficult with me, out of love for God, I'm going to show them respect. If I don't have that first and foremost in my mind, then how is it going to affect the rest of my life? So I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other strange gods before me. Let's really work on areas of our life, friends, to show God, not just by our words. Oh, yes, God, I love you. You're the best. You're the only one in my life. Well, then he needs to be our first priority. And when we make him our first priority, things change in our lives. Let's continue to pray for one another as we find ways to place God first. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us on our Ko-Fi, K-O-F-I, or GoFundMe at God's Playbook Podcast. Thanks and God bless.
If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.